Welcome back, fellow shop rats, to Machine Shop 101. Today we are back on our vintage Ward's Powercraft lathe. In our last episode here in the Machine Shop series, we were over here on the bridge port and we machined up a T block to be able to mount this quick change tool post to replace this lantern style mount that was on there, which is very, very hard to adjust and center every time you change out a tool. And we put this quick change on there that my buddy Chris gave me. This is an aluminum block. It's not as strong as a steel one. He upgraded his lathe with steel and donated the aluminum one here to the channel. So let's bring you over and let you see what a quick change tool post does in comparison to the lantern style. And then we're going to put it to work and just show you how great this is in comparison to the old lantern style. By the way, I'm Mike and you're watching Mike R's Shop. As I mentioned in our introduction, when this is in there, it uses a rocker kind of thing down here. It's a half moon into a cup down here to adjust the tool height and angle, not the height, but the angle. And it's very difficult to get these things centered. Yes, it can be done. Um, it's an old school way of doing things, but you're literally moving this wedge back and forth to change the angle of this tool. And it's always hard to find center. You get it set up for the particular tool you're using, and then you need to change that tool out, and you have to go through and do that setup all over again. With the quick change tool post, you set your center line in the block. Uh, you loosen this up, okay? And then you adjust this here to find center, and once you've got it centered, you just tighten it down and you never have to muck with it again. It comes on and off like this. There are a whole different series of these things here that I've got somewhere or another will dig up. And you can put different cutters in and so forth. Um, so it's much nicer. I've actually been playing around with this just for fun before I turn the camera on. Just because I was wanting to have some fun and I was dealing with a whole bunch of text conversations I needed to get wrapped up. But I wanted to share this with you guys. So let's fire this thing up and we'll do a little turning and I'll explain a few other things while we're at it. Make sure our tool post is tight. That one we already know is adjusted. I centered it earlier. Turn our lathe on. Bring this in. A couple thousands. I'm not going to any specific dimension. Engage our drive. Beautiful curl, really working nicely. Couldn't be happier with that. Actually, looks like the tool is a little bit below center, so we need to adjust it. We'll do that on our next pass. This is just an old piece of steel rod. I don't even know what it's from. I just found it upstairs in the warehouse and thought, it's not hardened steel, so this will be fun to play with. Probably at some point I'll remember what that's for and kick myself for doing this. I had actually turned this little bit down earlier, so it's not quite as aggressive here. Beautiful curl coming off of there. Really happy with that. We just need to adjust this up. It's down a little low, but that's a quick, easy fix. I'll just let it finish making this pass. So to bring that up, all we got to do is loosen this and just thread this down a little bit. So it picks it up. It looks like our jam nut must be holding us up here. Or maybe it's maxed. Yep, it's maxed out. Okay, it's as far as we go, but it's still doing a beautiful job. If we needed to, we could uh, put a spacer underneath that. Real simple. Just put a washer in there to give us a little more height. I'm not going to worry about that today. Is that for what I'm doing here? It's it's working well. Yeah, we're a bit low, but that's okay. Let's turn it in. Take another pass. 
few foul, no big deal. Just look at how beautiful that is. It's the best cutting we've ever done on this lathe. So if we needed or wanted to, we could um, loosen this up, change the angle for whatever reason, change the different cutter bits that we're using. You can see each one of these points a different way. So let's say for some reason we needed to come in at a more severe angle, this one would do that. Um, one that's straight. One thing I don't have is a parting tool. I need to get a parting tool one of these days, although I may have one here that just needs to be sharpened. Um, there's this one here. I don't know if I have, I thought there was extra bits in here. There's all kinds of extra screws. I thought there was extra bits too, but uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. There's plenty of bits here. But overall, I mean, this is just beautiful. Now, there's also the different amounts. I'll show you those. This one may actually be better for this style here. I just grabbed the first one. Uh, it's a sandwich style instead of just using screw bolts. So these loosen up. And uh, I don't have a wrench to do it, but then there's, it's just a plate and you can put your tooling in there. Um, there's the one I was using. There's a round one for any kind of round tools that we want to use. And then there's another one, which is like this that I've already was using. Sorry. Um, so it's pretty much, I think from what I can see, it's the duplicate. But the nice thing why you would want two of those is let's say that I'm cutting something and I need to put one here for, for certain things quick change it over and put one here so I can have one that has the tool coming out this way and then the other one I can actually use to put the tool coming out this way you see what I mean so I can because if I if I've got my tool here like this and I'm on this side it has to be that way but if I need to go this way it's wrong and it would probably need to come out the other side so that gives me that ability to have two tools set up for quick change for whatever setup I'm doing here on the lathe to be able to cut stuff. I'm going to put a shim in there and bring that up a little bit, see if we can get that finished just a little bit better. These tool uh, cutter holders are pretty small, so we could potentially uh, put a shim stock under that, or like I said, we can put a washer under here to just bring that up a little bit. I believe that will accomplish the same thing. Um, nope, it's still going to bottom out. It's not going to make any difference, I don't think. Yep. So if we're going to shim that, we would have to put shim stock or something underneath there. I don't know if we could put a second cutter bar in there. I don't know if it would fit. Yeah, it would be tight, but we could use one of those as our shim. So I guess we're not going to be able to do that. I don't want to mess with that. It's actually cutting pretty good, all things considered. So the other thing that we had going on here... And while I'm thinking of it, I'll mention one more thing. You don't have to use the stop, obviously. You could pick that up to where you wanted it and clamp it down. As long as it was tight, it would probably work, but it's really not recommended. You really do want that tool um, with your adjustment there. But I did just ping that up a little bit to get us closer to the center. In a pinch, if you were in a hurry, you could do that. Um, so again, it's all optional. But what I was going at here, just a second. There we go, back down where it belongs. The other thing I had going on here um, was this thing was rocking all over the place. And uh, it was because the slides were not adjusted properly. So I took a screwdriver and as it was, um, I was just grabbing it by hand and twisting it and then moving the slide in and out like this to be sure it wasn't binding and kept tightening that down until it got tight to the point that these wouldn't move. So I do a little turn, little turn, little turn. Uh, there's none on that side. Yeah, but I did these three. Um, I didn't think there was, I didn't do any over there, but I wanted to check. So I would just turn these little bit by little bit until basically this got so tight that it wouldn't move. And then I would just back it off. Um, and I did them individually like that until all the rock was gone. Then I did the same thing down here. A lot of the play, this whole thing was doing this because this bar was out around a little bit and it was all in these slides right here. So I've got those both working really well. This one's a little snug, but I'd rather have zero play. And uh, so, you know, if you have problems with your head, a lot of people like to eliminate this head 
and I'm going to do that at some point. I've got more tool steel down here um, to make another mount for this and uh, get rid of this. But for now, um, that would give me a lot more rigidity, but that's also going to give me a height problem. So uh, to, to get this in, perp in use as quickly as possible, we milled off this plate steel here um, so that we could just use this right on here. And I'm really happy with that. You know, this, this head does adjust this way. So it gives us a ton of versatility between this thing being able to spin around in different directions here. Um, you know, we can move this, whatever we need to now, uh, obviously with different cutters in there and so forth. So I really like this quick change tool post and how it's working on this lathe that makes it much more versatile. Um, that's a little bit rough, but it's probably more rough because of the speed at which I have, uh, the belt going and well, that needs to be here. I can change the gearing in here. I have different gear sets for this. I'll show you what we got here. And I can change the feed gearing on this feed so that it slows it down some. And uh, there's all kinds of things it can do. You can cut threads with this. And I've got all the extra gears for it in here. There they are. So I haven't really taken time to research all of that. But that will change the speed, uh, increase it, decrease it, make it so you can cut threads, make it so you can get a better finish, yada, yada, yada. So it's, it's a really versatile versatile lathe for an old home hobbyist lathe and there's all of the setup there um, for all the different gears and what you do and how you set it up for what and threading charts and all that stuff is right in there some of you guys had been asking how it went after we milled off that t-plate to mount that quick change and you were wondering how the lathe was working I hadn't used it until today, and that's part of the reason why I mucked around a little bit before I turned the camera on. Like I said, I was involved in a whole bunch of conversations that I just needed to get wrapped up so I wouldn't keep getting interrupted uh, in the filming process. But by the same token, I also um, just wanted to just enjoy messing around with it myself for a little while. I'm really, really happy with that. The Cincinnati lathe has that on there as well. Um, because that's a newer lathe than this one, believe it or not. This is a much, much bigger unit. And it's also really stiff from not being used. There we go. Well, when we get to this machine here, we'll get all that cleaned up, straightened up, and so forth. But it's the same principle. I'm sure this is wobbly as most of them are. Um, but this machine will obviously handle much bigger stuff once we get it going. But we've got a job of work here to get this one going. We haven't even had time to look at it yet. That's a winter project. Uh, Chris will come back sometime this winter and we'll tear into that and find out exactly what's wrong with it besides what we already know. Not that it has anything to do with the uh, machining project, but I just wanted to mention I also did get some time off camera to quickly dust up that floor and get it cleaned up a little better. So next step is get the seat out, and I'm working on getting the upholstery fat padding to be able to replace those uh, side pieces with some custom pieces that will blend in with the armrests. I just about picked something up today, but I just had a check in my guts that said, not yet, you're not ready for that. Tool feed is just a little fast, but you know what? Pretty good considering what this thing is. And like I said, we could slow that tool feed down and get rid of that little bit of uh, threading that is kind of leaving there. So not bad at all. That'll do. Works much better. Really happy with it. Thanks, Chris. I guarantee these tools and equipment, as old as they are, especially that Powercraft home hobbyist lathe, is capable of way more than you might imagine. Um, just changing from that lantern style to this quick change post 
is a complete game changer in what I'm going to be able to do with this thing. I can already tell that. If you've been around the channel for a while, you've seen me use this a ton to machine all kinds of different things. And we've been able to get things within a few thousandths. Um, this is going to increase the accuracy because it's just got so much better cutting ability with holding that tool rigid. And now that we have these things adjusted so they're not wobbling around, it makes a huge difference. So if you have the opportunity, I picked this up from a buddy of mine for 500 bucks. Um, so they're not out of line. This one's a fairly good size unit. I can actually fit a big block Mopar crank in here to polish it. I would never turn my own cranks in it. No, I don't want to do it over there either. <laughs> that machine probably could, but you'd be better to take it to a machine shop for that. Um, but for polishing cams and polishing cranks and stuff like that, I've done that in this lathe. Harbor Freight has less expensive versions that are smaller that won't do all that work. But most of what I do on here, like for example on the 47, if you've seen those episodes, uh, is turning little bushings. We turned a brake pedal bushing for this car, saved ourselves like 30 or 40 bucks using just a, a blank bushing that we got from um, the hardware store in town and we turned it down to the right size and was able to press it in with the Dake press. We made a little plastic spacer for the Oakland uh, for a part that was missing that you just can't buy anymore. Um, there's all kinds of so there's just so many little things that you can make with with a lathe, even one of the smaller hobbyist lathes that you can get from Central Tool or Har Harbor Freight or whatever. They'll do a respectable job. So if you have the opportunity to pick one of those things up for a pretty reasonable price, do it. You won't regret it. Watch videos on how to use this stuff. Safety first, of course. Safety glasses. Don't get your long hair around stuff. Keep your shirt sleeves out of the way. All that stuff. Safety first. Not like my buddies over at Iron Horse Garage say where they say safety third. It was one of those days today I needed the break. I've got to get back in and get to work. I still have a bunch of things I need to do today. But it was fun to come out here for a couple of hours, take my lunch break, clear my mind, play around, and then talk to you guys about what we've discovered and that kind of stuff. So I need to get my little brush and get all my shavings cleaned up. I try something I try to do at the end of every day when I've been machining, clean the machines up real quick so they're ready to go for the next time. And then next time, I don't know what we'll be doing, but we will be definitely doing something. So we'll catch you there. And as around here, we say all the time, or as we say around here all the time, don't forget, it's important. It's one thing that could probably change your life if you would let it. Don't forget. Wow.